the year is 2024. There's plenty of great RPGs out there to play, like the Yakuza series, the Souls games, Horizon, Witcher, Baldur's Gate, Divinity, and Monster Hunter, just to name a few. Most of these games have come up with sequels and their own games in the past decade and are all enjoyable to play, but for some people like me, it may not be their cup of tea, so we want to find something older to play that satisfies our nostalgia thoughts or just to find something simpler to play. Enter The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, a game that came out back in 2011 and remains to be one of the most played games on Steam, as well as a game that I come back to pretty much every year because no matter how much time flies, I always come back to this masterpiece. Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and today, I'm going to be talking about why I still play Skyrim on a personal level. I know that this is a topic that's been talked about many times with many creators expressing their own opinions and reasons for playing the game, but I wanted to make one too. Not because of others, but just to get my own personal thoughts out on a platform where people can sort of relate or groove me in, in some sort of way. Not that you have to, and that's fine. I just want to put this somewhere because this game is special to me. Not just as a young child, but also a young adult in a world where modern games have become lost with the identity of making a fun, enjoyable game that can be replayed for years and years. And Skyrim is one of the few games that can, well, do that. Hell, all the Bethesda games should be on this list. I hope that from talking about my personal experience, people can incite some sort of feeling towards this great game. Freeform role-playing games, or free forms, are a type of role-playing game which employ informal or simplified rule sets, emphasize costume and theatricality, and typically involve large numbers of players in a common setting. This means that the players are given the freedom to approach and play through the game however they want, with no limitations, like what we see in modern games where areas are gated to levels or you can't progress the request without doing a prerequisite or something beforehand. Lock progression is another way to put this as well, which is fairly common with modern RPGs because players are intended to be powerful but not as strong early on. Usually, it starts off slow, with you creating your character and introducing you to the world, getting some starting quests before eventually beginning your journey to do whatever it is the character needs to do. Go too far away and enemies will be overleveled, forcing you to go back and do some quests in order to get stronger and then try to tackle it again. With Skyrim on the other hand, for all of its purposes, it doesn't have any of these limits. You begin the game and start your journey as soon as you exit the Halgen Cave, going anywhere you want, even though the game gives you a direction to head towards, which is Riverwood. You don't have to think if you don't want to, and level limits do not exist, with the only thing to worry about being difficulty, which influences how much damage you do to opponents and how much damage they do to you. You can go explore caves, head over to the College of Winterhold, or join the Thieves Guild in Riften, and all of that can be done on level 1 if you wish. Skill system also influences the style of gaming, as simply doing actions that associate with that skill level that skill up while also contributing to your overall level, which in other games is usually done with one XP level instead of two, giving players plenty of options and playstyles as opposed to sticking to just one, which was one of the many design decisions that Todd Howard wanted to put in in order to make the game more fun and exciting. Armor and gear in the game feel more cosmetic than impactful, although you can upgrade your gear and make them stronger, which can lead to imbalancing at times, where you just essentially one-hit all the enemies you see, but hey, you can always change up the difficulty setting if the game feels too easy. I love this style of gaming because you can go anywhere you want without being limited to one area or place at a time. A formula they've been following since Morrowind with all of their games, including their newest title, Starfield. The feeling of exploring and creating your own experiences and stories is something that's always been fascinating and interesting for me and knowing I can do things differently every playthrough makes it replayable and really fun. One time I could join the Thieves Guild first, the next I could join the College of Winterhold first and even though the quest lines are the same, it's the feeling of changing something up that keeps our brains going and tells us, oh, I'll start a new playthrough but I'll do something different. The only level limit thing that I can think of is the Ebony Warrior, but even then, he doesn't appear to level 80, so I can make that an exception. Mods have been a big stepping stone for games that support it, adding new ways to play. Skyrim is no surprise, and I would argue he's the undisputed king of modding, as the modding community is as strong as ever, with dozens of mods that really change the way this game feels that I've never experienced with any other game before. The introduction of the collections page on the Nexus website and Wabberjack have made modifying a lot easier by simply downloading the required programs clicking one button and boom, dozens of mods installed within a few hours. Wobberjack is another great website for mod lists as well that uses a stock game system outside of base Skyrim, meaning you can play both a vanilla and a modded version at the same time. Obviously not at the same time as each other since running two Skyrim applications will probably burn your computer alive, but get the idea. Mods have not only helped me continue playing the game over and over again, but it's always nice to see different mod lists and how they compare to each other as experiences. You want a mod list that turns the game into an ARPG? Try Path of the Dovark in. You want a mod list that aims to keep the game close to vanilla but with quality of life improvements and new content? Download Nordic Souls. You want something that gives you a hardcore survival experience? Get Librem SE. There's dozens of options to pick from on Wobberjack and every list feels different. I've played through a few of these and they're all fun in their own ways. 
just be wary of the disk space because these lists can be huge. The current mod list I'm using at the moment is the talk of the town, which is called Novus. Designed to make Skyrim as modern and new as possible, this mod list is not only 300GB long, but it has some of Skyrim's best mods. Alongside plenty of changes that for vanilla players that have never played a modded experience before, it's going to feel completely different. I've played plenty of mod lists, but nothing as good as Novus, and I highly recommend it to everyone who wants to try a mod list for the first time. Something to be aware of as a word of advice is that you need to get yourself Nexus Premium, a service on the Nexus site that is fairly cheap but allows for uncapped downloads, since a free user can only download up to a certain limit. This makes it so that you don't have to go through the effort to manually click on each download and you can AFK or do something else while it's downloading in the background. I'd go on about Novus, but it deserves its own video, so I'll leave links to both the Novus website and a showcase for anyone interested. There's not much else to say here other than all kinds of mods being developed for Skyrim and plenty of new ones are still coming around too. My favourite mod in the past few years would have to be Dynamic Animation Replacer, a framework that aims to replace character animations with new ones. This has gone on to bring out dozens of new mods such as new weapon animations, climbing, sneaking, walking and running to name a few. The EVG Animated Traversal mod is one of my favourite mods, pretty much adding what I just said and adds a new dynamic to the game, especially in dungeons. Why bother going around when you can simply just climb a ladder or vault over a ledge and save time? To finish this part off, anything you can think of is in this game, albeit armors, weapons, quests, new locations, overhauls and many more. And with the disappointment of Starfield modding in its current state, it's safe to say that Skyrim will continue to be the king of modding. At least until Elder Scrolls 6 comes out or Bethesda locks in with Starfield. Somehow. Even though I feel that the story gets a bit of slack due to how quick and short it is to complete, I still think that the story is one of the best stories in the Elder Scrolls games, although Oblivion or heck, Shivering Isles can be argued for having the best main stories in the series. Due to how streamlined and simplified Skyrim is and all the quest lines that they added, I believe that to be the reason for the story being short in the first place. From killing your first dragon, to being taught by the Greybeards about your true destiny in the world and pursuing Alduin in his quest for power, minus some bits in between the campaign with the neutral meeting of Hive Hrothgar and the Thalmor Embassy parts which I felt was sprinkled in there a bit to help take us to new destinations, there's a lot to unpack in the story alone, just like there are in the game's many quests. Questing in this game is incredibly fun and exciting with lots of stories to tell and many scenarios, like unfolding a conspiracy plot within the hold of Markarth or getting drunk at Whiterun and having an encounter with the one and only Shielgorath. Even though I've done them countless times, they're still fun to do and there's something about it that just never gets old. I can't describe or say exactly what that is. Maybe it's just simply... Nostalgia. Nostalgia is a feeling of pleasure and sometimes slight sadness when you think about things that happened in the past. That pleasure feeling for me is whenever I play Skyrim time and time again. I didn't get into Skyrim until the special edition came out in 2016, which at the time only had a PS4 console and the older generation version of this game was pretty bad. Seeing that mods will get added to these versions as well, I decided to buy it, sit down and play it. I'll never forget going for the 100% completion and doing almost everything that could be done in the game. It was a good time in my high school life where I had no responsibilities and could just play games. That and Overwatch. Overwatch took over my life more than this game did. But after that playthrough, I decided to download some mods and see how it works, only this time, mods on PlayStation were limited and there wasn't a lot of space so I only downloaded a few basic mods, played through it, then stopped playing. As soon as I got my PC in 2018, I instantly started downloading and creating my own mod list as there was no way of downloading a collection like there is now. As Skyrim players say, you spend more time modding than you do playing, and that was me for a long period of time because I just wanted to keep downloading more, not knowing about compatibility issues and extra processes I had to go through just to get the list running properly. After hours and hours of fixes, I finally got the game working and just like that, the game transformed into something different while keeping that vanilla flair that I so remember from the last time I played Skyrim. Ever since then, year by year, I'd always play Skyrim with a brand new list, checking out new mods and trying new things that I've never tried before and to this day I still try new things. I guess part of me that gets me playing over and over is the amount of things that I can remember fondly from playing when I was a lot younger. The gear, the NPCs, the feel and simplicity of it all. Even with complicated mods that we have now which changes the way a lot of things work in comparison to the base game. I always evoke feelings of happiness, satisfaction, heck, serotonin and dopamine whenever I do something special new or just again. One last thing to mention for me loving and playing this game is that modern games are boring. Now don't take this too seriously, it's not like modern games in general are boring because there's plenty of great games that you can play right now, RPGs or any genre really that are just as good if not better than Skyrim. But for me, Skyrim is a game I can always lean back to whenever I want a jolly good time or a way to kill time while progressing something. 
It's a game that, with thousands of mods, the game will truly never get old unless mods decide to get terminated or some form of new DRM comes in to prevent mods from being a thing. I'm looking at you, Capcom. I've seen what you've done in Resident Evil Revelations. Ain't no way you're really doing that. Right now, Bethesda is ruining the game with these random updates thanks to the implementation of paid mods or creations, as they call it, which I believe to be a test for what they're going to try and do in Starfield. Luckily, the stop game method exists or else we'd all be doomed. And lastly, Skyrim is just fun and filled with so many opportunities and ways to create, refine, and define your character, even if you're the Dragonborn over and over again. So those are my thoughts and reasons why I love Skyrim. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments why you love and continue to play Skyrim a decade after its release and what good mods you can recommend for anyone that's looking to get into modded Skyrim. I can also recommend specific mods if you're looking for something, so I'd be able to help too. And as always, I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.